good. I've got a quick question for you all. How many of you have ever been asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? A lot of hands. So this is a question that people have asked me repeatedly throughout my life. Stacy, what do you want to be when you grow up? And this question I know is commonplace, but it always confused me for a few reasons. The first reason was, the first question that came to my head after people asked me that is, what is grown up? Does grown up mean 25? Does it mean 35? Does it mean 50? Does it mean 90? What is grown up? And then the second question that I had was, what do you want to be when you grow up? It implied to me in the question that I could only really be one thing. And that never really sat well with me because I had a lot of ideas and a lot of things that I was interested in. And then the third reason why this question always confused me was because, honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to be when I was in middle school and high school when people started asking this. And I was lucky. I grew up in a family in Arizona, back in the United States, to a mom and a dad who both worked for a company called IBM. And at IBM, my parents got a discount on computers. So from a very young age, at eight years old, my parents came home with this device. It was the very first computer that I had seen in my life. And they put this down in a room in our house, and they went to my brother and I, my brother who's two years older than me, named Scott, and they said, Stacy and Scott, this is a computer, and you can play on this computer for 30 minutes a day. It's all you get, 30 minutes a day, but you can explore and play on this computer and do whatever it is you want. And so my brother and I started off playing a lot of video games, as kids do, and as time went on, I started to realize what if I wanted to create my own video game? How would I do that? And I started Googling, realized, all right, there's this thing I've got to do called coding. I've got to learn how to code and build something online. And so in middle school and high school, my brother and I tag teamed with our 30 minutes a day on the computer learning how to code. And we would sit down and at first just learn ourselves. And as time went on, my parents, friends came to us and said, we think you guys are tech savvy and you can build these websites. Could you build us some websites for our businesses? And so in middle school and high school, my brother and I made a little bit of extra income by using the skill that we had learned by just Googling. And then as time went on, my brother and I said, we've been building a lot of these websites for family friends. Um, what about building something for ourselves? We've got ideas, we've got things that, that we think should exist in the world. Why don't we build something in between the summer, between high school and college? And at the time, my brother and I had a bunch of ideas, but we had narrowed down to one idea. We wanted to be able to allow people to store usernames and passwords online so that they could log into everything without having to click that forgot password that I know we all have clicked from time to time so that we could remember all those usernames and passwords. And as my brother and I had this idea, we went to our parents and we said, we want to go start a business that allows people again to store their usernames and passwords and log into everything with just one username and password. And my parents came back to the both of us and they said, um, what we do in this family is we go out and you both are gonna go get internships and you're gonna work at those jobs and then eventually go to college, work more internships, and then graduate and get a corporate job. Work your way up the corporate ladder, that's the way the world works. But my brother and I said, don't think so. We wanna go start this business. My dad came back on the other end of that and said, great, if you want to start a business, then you need to move out of the house and learn how to be financially independent. And so at 18 years old, the day after I graduated from high school, I packed up my bags and I moved from where I was living my entire life in Arizona to Los Angeles, California to start this business with my brother. And that was the first time in my life that I learned a very important lesson, which was 
get outside of your own comfort zone. Packed up my bags, moved with my brother to Los Angeles. And if you're not familiar with LA, um, we decided to live in South Central Los Angeles, not the best part of town, but we lived there because it was something that we could afford. My brother and I had done the math before moving. We had r rented out a two bedroom apartment and we realized it was 900 US dollars for each month and it had two bedrooms, so if we rented out one of the rooms, then we'd only have to pay 450. And th there were two of us, so if we split that one room, it would be 225 apiece. And we could afford to do that for a few months in between high school and college. And so my brother and I spent that summer hunkering down, building the first version, our prototype, of the business that we called My Social Cloud, that allowed people to store these usernames and passwords. And as we were building the initial prototype, one day I was sitting at my computer and I decided to pull up a website, Twitter. And as I was looking at Twitter, I saw a tweet come through my feed. And the tweet was from a guy named Richard Branson. How many people know who Richard Branson is? Okay, so most people. For those who don't, Richard Branson started something called the Virgin Group. It's a company that has a lot of different, um, it's a brand that has a lot of different companies underneath it. And he's known as one of the world's best known entrepreneurs. And so this tweet came through my feed. And the tweet said, enjoy intimate cocktails plus two parties with me in Miami, $2,000 to charity. And then if you see it up there, the tweet under that gave an email address. And I immediately took that email address and I emailed and I said, my name is Stacy Ferreira. I'm starting a business with my brother and we'd love to learn from you about how you grew your businesses. We're not legally old enough to drink cocktails in the United States, but we would absolutely love to come learn from you and meet you. Stayed up all night and then got an email back from his secretary later that night. And the email said, great, if the two of you can donate $2,000 a piece, so $4,000 combined, and be in Miami, Florida, which is all the way across the other side of the United States, in 48 hours, then you can meet with Branson. My brother and I read this email and then we look at each other, because we're, remember, two broke, about to be college kids, and I did the only thing that I could think of to do with a time crunch, which was pick up the phone and call my parents. I said, hey, mom and dad. Now, this is in 2011. So I said, hey, I know you don't know what Twitter is, but there's this amazing opportunity to go meet Richard Branson in Miami. Can I borrow $4,000 to go? My dad comes back on the other end of the phone. He says, Stacy, $4,000 is a lot of money. And you're supposed to be financially independent. But write a proposal for me. Why do you need the money? Where is the money going? And most importantly, you need to produce for me a spreadsheet with a payment plan of how you're gonna pay me back if I decide to loan you the $4,000. So I say, okay, looking at the clock, time is counting down, so I get to work. Start typing up this proposal, and then send it off to my dad. I get a call about an hour later, and my dad says, here's the deal. Stacy, two options. Option number one, I will loan you the $4,000 with the one stipulation that you have to pay me back every dollar of that $4,000 by the end of the summer. Three months, by the time you step foot on college campus, you have to pay me back. Option number two, you don't take the loan. It's a lesson in money management. So me being the young, optimistic person that I am, decided I'm gonna keep an open mind and I'm gonna go out there and make the most of this opportunity. So decided to take the loan of $4,000 from my dad, 
fly to Miami and meet with Branson. And over the course of a few nights, we were able to sit down and talk with him about who we were, the business idea that we were working on, and some of the questions, ask him some of the questions that we had about how we were actually going to take this business to market and how we were going to grow it and scale it. And over those two nights, my brother and I had devised a plan. And the plan was this. We wanted to walk away with one thing from those two nights. And that was his email address. Because we knew that one night, two nights with someone is fantastic. But if you can build a relationship with that person over time, then you have access to constantly learn and constantly ask the questions that you need to learn to level up in your own game. So after the second night of being there, my brother and I went up to him and we asked, could we have your email address? Not the one that goes to your secretary, yours. And we handed him a piece of paper and he wrote it down. And I'll never forget because then my brother took that piece of paper and went over to his secretary and was like, is this really Branson's email address? And she was like, yeah, it is, so keep it close. And then with our mission accomplished, my brother and I flew back to Los Angeles and we were more motivated, more excited than ever before to hunker down and work on our business. So we built the initial prototype, launched the prototype of my social cloud, got a lot of feedback from family and friends, and then again, from the feedback that we were getting, we had a host of questions. And we sent those questions off to Branson, asking him, you know, how do you, how do you think we should market this thing? How do you think we should invest in marketing? Um, what do you think that we should do about customer support as we're growing the user base? Asking him a lot of kind of early basic questions that we had no idea what we were doing at the time. And he sent back an email and said, why don't you talk to a friend of mine named Jerry Murdoch? Jerry is a venture capitalist who invests in companies and helps founders like you find the answers to these questions that you're asking. A few weeks later, Jerry got on a plane and he flew out to Los Angeles, South Central LA, to meet with my brother and I. He drilled us on a bunch of questions about the business. He asked us, you know, why did you start this business? How did you build the product to date? How many people are using it? How have you taken it to market to date? What are your plans for further growth? And he asked, what are you guys doing about school? You're 18 years old and you're building this company. Are you going to go to college? My brother and I answered all these questions to the best of our ability. And then that night, Jerry asked us to go out to dinner. And at dinner, Jerry sat us down, and he said, here's the deal. I like you guys. I like your grit, your ability to have an idea, go out and execute on something and bring it to life. I want to help you grow this business. He said, I talked to Branson. I talked to my other friend, Alex Welch. And the three of us would like to invest $1.2 million to help you grow your business. Now, if you're wondering, we took the investment, and the first thing that we did was pay my dad back. <laughs> and then after that, the next few years, my brother and I were on the wildest journey of our life, building our first startup. And that's where I learned another really important lesson in life, which is try, fail, learn, repeat. And this became the motto over the course of those years that we were building my social cloud. We had an idea for something, a new way to market the product, or a new feature in the product that we thought would help customers try it, maybe fail from that, get back up, learn, and then create that cycle again and again and again and get really good at doing it fast so that we could build the business and scale. And after a few years of running my social cloud, another guy came along named Michael and Michael was running a company called Reputation.com. And Michael came to my brother and I and said, you know what, I've got a deal for you guys. I like the technology that you've been building, and I think it would work really, really well at Reputation. And so in 2013, my brother and I decided to sell our company to Reputation.com when I was just 20 years old. 
After selling Reputation.com, I worked at Reputation, and people started asking me again, Stacy, you're 20 years old. You've just sold your first business. What do you want to be when you grow up? And it was a question that I was faced with again, asking myself, what do I really want to do? And as I was exploring this question for the second time in my life in a big way, I decided I wanted to go out and learn from other people about how they chose what it is they wanted to do in their life. So I teamed up with a friend of mine named Jared Kleinert to publish a book called Two Billion Under 20, all about the two billion people on Earth who are 20 and under 20 years old and how they're using technology to kind of shape the way that they think about the future, and in particular, shape the way they think about the future of w what they do for work, the thing that everyone spends the majority of their time doing. And as I was talking to all these young people about how they think about work, one of the things that I started thinking about was how much work has changed over time. I started talking to my grandma, very different age demographic, and my grandma said, you know, Stacy, how I chose what to do was very simple. I did what paid the bills and what put food on the table for your dad. She worked one job in a factory in the United States for 42 years, and that was the one job that she held her entire life. And then I started talking to my mom, and I realized that my mom's career was slightly different, her answer to what she wanted to do for work was really um, factored in by two things. She looked at, again, what was going to pay the bills, but then also what was something that she was actually passionate about? What, should, what did she want to do every single day? What was something that wasn't going to drive her insane? What was something that she felt personally drawn to? And so my mom worked a few jobs throughout her career at one point, I know the slide says unemployed. Really, that was raising my brother and I. For anyone who's a parent, you know that's not unemployed. Um, but she worked a few jobs throughout the course of her career. And then that brought me back to the book that I was writing. And I realized that my generation was slightly different. In the book, exploring the lives of these young people, I started realizing that the way that these people chose their career oftentimes was, what are they passionate about? Often money was a secondary to their passion. People said, I would rather work on something that I felt had impact in the world than get a big paycheck. And that was really fascinating to me. And I learned that the way the world is working is changing. And the way that we define work is changing. Again, as I was exploring this question of what do I, I want to be when I grow up, I got asked to speak on a panel. And again, that lesson that I learned about keeping open-minded and going and taking advantage of opportunities, one of my friends said, Stacy, I want you to come speak on this panel. I think it'll be good. You might even meet some cool people there. So I agreed. And I flew to San Francisco to speak on a panel. And lo and behold, a few really cool people were there. So I spoke on this panel with actually Tallulah Riley, who's on the other side of Elon, who is her husband. And Tallulah and I started talking about this question. How do people choose what it is they want to do? And how should we try and talk to our younger kids, nieces, nephews, about what they want to be when they grow up? And as we were talking about this, we realized that the way that the world is working is changing. You have Uber, you have Lyft, you have DoorDash, you have Amazon Flex, you have all these apps that give people now the ability to work multiple jobs often at the same time, but most importantly, work them on their own schedule. So people who are trying to juggle a job and school, or juggle a job and a family, or juggle multiple jobs, have that flexibility to pick and choose exactly when and where they want to work. 
And as Tallulah and I started talking about this, we decided there's a big segment of the population of people who don't have this flexibility today who need it. Those are the people that are working traditional hourly jobs, working in retail, in restaurants, in hotels, in a lot of the businesses and services that we use every single day. And so in 2015, Tallulah and I decided that we were actually going to team up together and start the next company called Forge and allow people to do exactly that, pick and choose the hours that they work in hourly establishments, retail, restaurants, hotels across the United States. And again, I started on this journey of try, fail, learn, repeat with Forge. As I reflect back on my life for the past few years, going through this entrepreneurial journey, there's one thing that I really notice. And that's that a lot of times when we're graduating from high school and just starting off, we think that there's a linear path. I know for me, at the time, I thought it was, I'm going to graduate from high school, I'm going to go to college, finish a four-year degree, and then I'm going to graduate from college and start working. But the path has been radically different from that. And that's okay. So the thing that I want to leave all of you with today is that when you're asking yourself, what do you want to do with your life, with your career, or when you're asking your kids or your nieces or your nephews what they want to do, instead of asking them, what do you want to be when you grow up, simply just ask them, what are all the things that you want to explore throughout your lifetime? And that'll allow them to leave the doors open, take an unconventional path, and maybe, just maybe, live the life they were meant to lead. Thank you so much.